All right, I wanted to show this uh, RF connector that you may have never seen before. Um, this is a uh, Hewlett Packard attenuator, uh, 10 dB attenuator, part number uh, 8492A. And uh, it has this really weird, weird connector. So you'd think, okay, well, looks like kind of like a, uh, kind of like an end connector where there's a center pin and then an outside, outside thing. They're about the same size, but they don't really don't go together. And you're trying to figure out, well, how does this work? So these are called APC-7s, APC-7, or just seven millimeter connectors. We used to just call them seven millimeter connectors. Um, and uh, so uh, how, how does this thing work? So what does the, what does the mating side look like? Okay. So, um, here, here is one and you can say, oh, I see this threads here and I could put these together and hmm. Okay. Well, but these are both, these both look the same. So how's that going to work? Okay. You can, you can come on here and you can screw them together. Okay. And they are a, a solid unit and you're wondering, well, how does that, how does that work? There's no, there's no center pin. No, there's no center pin. Uh, there are two flat spots that are the, the outer parts of the uh, coaxial waveguide, and those just mash together. That's just metal on metal. And then the center pins, they mash together metal on metal, but the little, the little tiny little thing that looks like a, a pin should go in it, it, it's actually spring loaded. I'll show a picture here. Um, it actually a spring loaded, like half a millimeter of travel. It's just, just a tiny bit. And so that's when you put these two things together, that center pin, no matter what, how much wear it's had and everything, those still will be in electrical contact. So it's kind of weird. It's just two flat things just smashing up against one another. And, but that's not where the weirdness stops. Okay. You say, okay, well, this is the, I don't know, maybe call it male section. This is the female section, but look at this. Let me, uh, let me spin this little thing around here. Uh, now they're both exactly the same sex. Uh, and so you could take this one and you can do the, you can do the spinny thing on it. And suddenly it has threads. So there's this threaded collar that you can just kind of hide in there and it becomes, I say, female or whatever, or you could spin it out, it becomes male. And if you had another one over here and, uh, and you had the two males, they're not going to work. So you have to figure out which, which one do you want to, <laughs> which one do you want to do? It doesn't really matter. So they are, they are sexless or hermaphrodite, whatever you want to call them. And yeah, so they are really, really weird. Now, um, why did they invent this connector? What, who, what possessed them to do this strange thing? Well, it has to come down to vector network analyzers. And I think the only place you'll actually see these used is vector network analyzers. And that's because you can have an absolute plane of reference. Remember when you calibrate open short load, you're calibrating it to a reference plane, which is an actual physical location. Well, these have a plane. These have a real plane, right? <laughs> they, they, they have a very, very distinct plane. And so the open short cowls look very, very easy. The short is just a piece of metal and it just, this thing just butts up against this copper slug or gold plated copper slug. And, um, and then the open is just a tube. And so, so you can really understand that there is a plane of reference and it can be very, very, very accurate because it's, it's machined very accurately. So that's why these things sort of, sort of got invented. Okay. Um, so this is an adapter. This goes from N to, uh, SM seven millimeter. Uh, I have another one here. We can put these together and we could test them. Now these things are good to 18 gigahertz. Okay. So they are specified to 18 gigahertz. So, um, we could actually try these things out. Those are, those are nice and oops, this one's spinning it. Oh, that's right. That thing can spin. Um, yeah, so these are nice and solid now. We, so we could put that on the VNA and sweep it. Maybe we'll do that. Um, but yeah, these, uh, these, uh, 
strange connectors. Uh, they are very expensive. <laughs> That's probably why you don't see them anymore. And they only go to 18 gigahertz, so um, they're not going to be very useful because because uh, the end connector goes to 18 gigahertz, right? SMA goes to 18 gigahertz. So um, yeah, these kind of had their place. Nobody uses them anymore, and uh, frequencies are up, getting higher and higher anyway. I, I borrowed these. I, I didn't have any in the lab, and I went to uh, lunch with my friend. And I said, "Hey, you guys still have any uh, any APC sevens laying around?" So he scrounged around and he found some for me. So we had lunch today, and he handed them over. So thank you. Um, yeah, he said he could sweep them if he wanted. He's got 50 gigahertz VNA as it were, <laughs> but I I think I'll trust him. I think. Uh, Nobody, nobody really cares about this thing, but I did want to show them off in case you ever see them and wonder what, what the hey. Um, these, these connectors here, you can, st you can still buy this stuff. These go for about $45. Um, and I think that's probably the Chinese copy cost. Um, I think if you bought this from Nar Narda or, you know, someplace, they'd probably charge you a couple hundred dollars for, for just this thing. Um, but yeah, uh, should we hook one up just for fun? Sure, why not? All right, let's do a transmission measurement here. Uh, we will set the frequency start and stop. And so we're sweeping between 300 uh, kilohertz and 1.3 gigahertz. All right, so we'll do a through measurement. Uh, here's an N, an N cable, so we'll go N to N and uh, we should be getting a pretty flat line with this cable, I would believe. Uh, even without a calibration, whatever is in there. Yeah, that looks uh, that looks like it's through. Cal will do a uh, response curve. There we go. It's nice and straight now. And we will set the uh, reference position to maybe in the middle. There we go. And we'll do a scale of, I don't know, say 2 dB per division. Let's do a cal again. Uh, connect through cable. And there we go. Look at that. Straight, straight, straight line. Okay. So what we're going to do is we will remove this one and we will take our through, our, our uh, end connector to end connector uh, adapter, and then I'll need a, uh, I'll need a female female here. Here's a female female. So this is also included, so you can figure out maybe how much of the mismatch is due to just that female female, but I imagine this is going to look awfully darn good. Screw these together. And it's looking pretty good. We'll do scale 1 dB per division. A scale of uh, 0.2 dB division. Yeah, so about 0.1 dB, little ringy stuff. And you can just imagine that just who knows what's causing that. But I don't think it's those uh, APC7s causing it. All right, well, there you go. Quick look at the APC7 or seven millimeter connector that you might find on old equipment.